In this lesson, we're looking at rates of enzyme reaction. So we have covered off now structure and function, and we now need to know what kinds of things impact enzyme function. So let's review what we know about enzymes. We know that enzymes are one of the four types of macromolecules. They are proteins, and like all macromolecules, they're made up of a single type of unit, like a monomer, that repeats over and over to form a polymer. Right? In proteins, the monomer is an amino acid, and this repeats to form a polypeptide uh, or a protein. And this polypeptide will fold around in itself, and perhaps around other polypeptide chains, to form a protein. And enzymes are specific types of proteins. An enzyme's specific job is to assist in chemical reaction. They are catalysts and they are there to speed up the chemical reaction. They do this by lowering the amount of energy needed to kickstart the reaction, and this is activation energy. They are specific. They will only look after one reaction, which the substrates can fit like a lock and key onto their active site. Once they change the chemical reaction, sorry, once they assist the chemical reaction, they themselves remain unchanged. And although enzymes are pretty much running everything in our body, they can be a little precious. And at times when their conditions are not ideal, they will denature, meaning they unroll, unfold, unravel, change shape, which essentially stops them from having the perfectly shaped active site and therefore being able to do their job. We also know that about the enzyme structure, we need to have the substrates um, colliding, right? For those collisions to occur, the reaction will occur and then the product will occur. Um, but that means that we need to have those collisions actually occurring. The movement of the enzymes in the substrate is entirely random, so we can't ever guarantee that the uh, substrate's going to run into the enzyme. And if the substrates are in water, they've got heaps of space to move around, but it does make them mobile, right? So because of that difficulty in aligning the substrate with the active site, um, it's going to change enzyme activity. Our main focus are the types of conditions which impact the functioning of an enzyme, and these are the four we're going to focus on, and they are color-coded throughout. Let's consider temperature first. If an environment increases in heat energy, that gives more kinetic energy to the particles, which means they're going to vibrate a lot more and in, in turn actually move more and collide more. But if we have too many of, you know, too much of an increase in heat energy, the bonds actually break in the polypeptide, okay? And the protein and the enzyme will denature and you know, then it's not going to do its job. So on a graph of temperature versus enzyme activity, we're going to see this. The temperature have a per sorry, the enzymes have this perfect opportunity right in the middle there. That's their little Goldilocks zone. And once things get a little bit too hot, the activity uh, decreases significantly because of the denaturing enzyme. pH works in a similar kind of way. Each enzyme will have an optimum pH range where, you know, based on where it's found in the body and what their function is. For example, digestive enzymes in the stomach need to work at a really low pH, so a more acidic pH. Blood enzymes work optim optimally closer to a neutral pH. So any change away from the optimum is going to decrease activity and it lead to denaturing. So if we look on this graph here, uh, pepsin works ideally at a really low pH because it's acidic and works in the stomach. Salivary uh, amylase there works obviously in the saliva, so works at a more neutral pH, closer to 7. And arginase is a liver enzyme and works at a higher, more basic pH. Now, we understand the importance of enzymes and substrates needing to collide to undergo the reaction, and so if there's a decreased uh, concentration of the substrate or the enzyme, then there's a decreased chance of those collisions occurring due to that random movement, and that means less chance of the substrate binding to the active site. Now, interestingly though, if there is too much substrate, then the active sites will fill up in the enzymes and the enzymes will essentially max out. So the enzyme will reach maximum rate. And if we look on a graph there, we can see that plateau substrate concentration and reaction rate. The reaction rate will hit a point where it cannot go any higher. So if we have a look at this and analyze this type of data, same thing. We can see that plateau there in enzyme um, activity. Now, inhibitors are some or chemical substances which block access to the active site. And this may be because they have the same shape as the substrate. And this means that none of the normal reactions which require the active site to occur can occur. Okay. Now, many drugs are developed to be enzyme inhibitors. So they're specifically designed with a molecular shape in mind to stop certain reactions from occurring in the body. We can see here this inhibitor is sitting right on that active site, not allowing the substrate to get in. So we're going to investigate uh, the effect of temperature and the rate of enzyme reactions uh, within our lesson so that we can complete our mandatory practical.